In this brief video lecture, we're going to talk about the concept of kernel modules, what they are, why they're there, and basically how to uh, manage them. This is a basic lecture from the perspective of a Unix end user, and the whole idea here is just to start getting an idea about how we can probe our system uh, for some information and start to understand what's going on at a little bit of a deeper level. So let's take a look at some slides and talk a little bit about what kernel modules are, then we'll jump over to the command line and we will take a look at how we can interact uh, with the system to find out what modules are installed and how to unload and load modules. First thing you need to know is that kernel modules uh, serve the basic um, need of the system to talk to hardware. And your kernel is the low-level uh, aspect of your operating system that basically sits between the hardware and um, the user and applications. And the kernel's job is to know how to talk to the CPU, uh, the kernel's job is to know how to talk to all of the attached devices like network cards and hard drives and basically just deals with um, translating any type of application directive uh, that needs to then go ahead and talk to the hardware. And the kernel is really great. Like it sits between you and your computer and it just knows how to talk to these devices. Uh, for the kernel to know how to talk to some piece of hardware, it needs to have uh, a module uh, that can tell it how to do that. Uh, and those modules usually um, can um, exist inside of the kernel. In other words, they can be compiled in and the kernel can have that knowledge kind of built into its brain. Uh, or those uh, modules can be actually um, stored external to the kernel and loaded when needed. Uh, there's some more details related to that process, uh, but for now we can kind of use this higher level abstraction of understanding that uh, kernel modules give us the ability to um, add functionality to our operating system's lowest level so that we can talk to additional pieces of hardware. What we're going to notice is that uh, on the system, uh, the kernel modules that can be plugged into the kernel while it's running uh, or plugged into the kernel at boot time uh, will be stored in lib modules. And this directory contains all of the compiled kernel modules that you have for your system. So again, these are very similar in Windows to drivers. You get a new printer, uh, you plug it into your Windows machine, and before Windows can actually print something, you usually need to go out and download a driver, either through Windows Update or from the manufacturer's website. And it's really no different with kernel modules. You have a new piece of hardware, the kernel needs to know how to interact with that hardware, and you have a driver to install. And again, in the case of the kernel modules that we're going to look at in lib modules, we're talking here about modular uh, kernel uh, modules. I know that sounds a little weird, modular modules, but these are the uh, basically the bits of code that uh, can be loaded and unloaded from the kernel at runtime. Uh, for some aspects of um, driver support for Linux or you know hardware support, it makes sense to have that knowledge embedded in the kernel, and so it can never be removed. Um, and and you know, again, this is like a higher level system uh, concept, but just know that the pieces that we're talking about are those modules today that can be loaded and unloaded. So let's talk a little bit about how we do this. Um, we can see all the currently loaded modules uh, that the kernel has by using the lsmod command. Uh, we have the ability to install a new specific module with insmod. Um, sometimes uh, kernel modules will require other kernel modules to, to do everything they need to do. So we can use the mod probe command to um, load a module and then any other dependency uh, kernel modules that it might need. And we can rm mod a module from the kernel. So why would you want to, you know, um, put a, you know, take a kernel module out at runtime, or why would you want to put a new one in? Uh, maybe you're having some system instability, uh, the ability to um, RM mod uh, a kernel module and take it out of the kernel while it's running could be a way to figure out if a connected piece of hardware and its associated kernel driver uh, is causing, you know, system instability. Uh, sometimes you might also have um, you know, n not a need. Maybe you plug a tape drive or something into a machine once a month uh, to get some type of backup or verify backups, and you just don't feel that uh, that driver needs to be loaded full time in the kernel. You have the ability to just uh, use the mod probe command to load that driver into the kernel when you need to use that specific piece of hardware. So again, it just gives you all types of flexibility. Um, you know, again, RM mod could also be used like in Windows when you right click uh, on a specific device. Uh, to disable it. So you want to disable a piece of hardware that, that you don't think is working efficiently. Um, you can just remove the kernel module uh, and get a similar effect in Linux. 
So let's jump over to the command line and see how these work and how they look on my system. For this part of the exercise, I'm going to be logged in as the root user. It just makes things a little bit easier, uh, and I will not have to constantly keep typing sudo. Uh, in the cases when you interact with the kernel uh, and try to load and unload kernel modules, it's probably best to use sudo just to make sure that you know, you're know uh, only doing that one thing as root and not going to cause any trouble. It's always bad to constantly work as root, in my opinion. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the uh, drivers currently loaded into the kernel. So if I type lsmod, you'll see a whole number of items uh, that are listed here. And if we scroll down, it kind of lists the name of each one of these drivers. Uh, and then you'll notice over on the right-hand side, it gives you information on any of the drivers that have dependencies. So if, uh, you know, for any of these drivers, uh, that they rely on another driver, you'll see that here. Uh, and from here, like from this standpoint, I can go ahead and I can start to uh, remove things should I find that there's anything troublesome. So LP is uh, the line printer driver, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. So I can type rmod to get rid of it, uh, and you'll notice that I get no feedback, so it must have happened. And if I type lsmod at this point, and look down towards the end of uh, the list of kernel modules, you'll notice that that module is gone. So this idea that we can see what uh, current modules are loaded into the kernel, we have the ability to remove modules that could be uh, troublesome, uh, and then we also have the ability to load them back in. Uh, there is an INS mod command, but I prefer to use mod probe because it's going to uh, handle any type of dependencies. So let's load it back in. And now if we do ls mod, you'll notice that that kernel module will be right at the top of the list because we loaded it back in. So we have the ability to load, unload uh, kernel modules, and that's pretty cool. The modules themselves are stored in um, slash lib slash modules. And if we look in that directory, you'll notice uh, that there are uh, different folders based on different uh, versions of the kernel. I will go into um, this one. And if we take a look, you will notice that uh, there are a bunch of other things going on in here. Uh, lots of information regarding the modules that are currently built for the kernel. And I'm going to go into the kernel directory. And you'll notice that the modules that are available for the system are organized into uh, specific folders based on kind of what they do. Uh, and notice some of these, these are they're specifically drivers, and I'm using the term kind of generically. Uh, but notice you can tell that some things related to network operation, some are uh, related to sound. So um, let's go take a look at uh, stuff in the net folder. So in here, what you'll see is information related to all different types of uh, networking services like Bluetooth services, Apple Talk, uh, and, and you get an idea of all of the available uh, kernel modules that come with the default Ubuntu. Um, this is the version 12 long term support version of Ubuntu. I mean, these are pre built uh, with the kernel that comes with this distribution. Obviously, when you rebuild your own kernel, you have the ability to control what modules you compile and uh, actually which functionality you compile into the kernel itself or leave separately um, as a module. So again, this gives you the ability to kind of start to understand that, you know, for the kernel to talk to some external hardware, it needs to have a driver, which will be represented by a kernel module, uh, and that kernel module needs to exist on the system, and it needs to be loaded up into the kernel so that you can use that piece of hardware. Uh, and if we were to explore any of these directories any further, you'd find some more information about the items that are in there. Uh, and you'll notice that you get your compiled kernel module, and you get a couple of other things in this directory in terms of items that are... Um, at least in this case of the Bluetooth uh, module, some other modules that are going to be required uh, dependencies of that module, which again is why we use ModProbe to load these up. So what's the purpose of this lecture? To let you know that this is the, the system for uh, the kernel to manage talking to external hardware. Um, it gets very complex, but at the most basic level, uh, as long as you have a driver uh, that is pre-built for your kernel, Either you do that at the time you build the kernel, if you're building a custom kernel, or the manufacturer of your hardware provides you with pre-built uh, modules that you can load in for the specific version of the kernel for the specific distribution you're using. Uh, and that's just a quick introduction to how we can find some information out about kernels uh, modules.